<laughs> and I'm really sorry we can't do everything, but I think that'd be impossible. Uh. Yeah, before we can, maybe we can do it. Uh, but, so does anybody have any dilemmas or questions that they would want to ask any of the members? Okay, let's have a question. Uh, I see number. Uh, <laughs> I'm CK. I work actually at JC Teacher, so I teach a general paper. So I'm really interested in like, uh, issues of ethics. And uh, in particular, I'd like to direct this question to uh, Evan. So I understand I'm just looking through your photos on the, your transit project, right? And I also understand that you eventually published it and sold it, sold it as a book. We published it. Oh, we published it, yeah. So, so of course, in the capturing of the images, uh, some of the people I noticed, uh, of course, you don't know them. They are called a little bit of a not so, they are not so flattering position and, and, and yeah, imagery and so on. But it's very aesthetically pleasing. And I totally understand the the story, the, I think, and the purpose of doing this as a project. So, so through the process of publishing this book, uh, was there, do you need to, like, is, is there anything ethically wrong about uh, this whole process? Do you need to seek that consent uh, before you publish the book? Um, I think we, 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 we almost been published. <laughs> but, um, okay, there were two mediums which I released it, released it in. One is online, and one is uh, the published book. I think I see them as very different platforms. Um, <coughs> uh, when, when I published it in the book, um, there, were, there was a very real limitation in the sense that we had, to, we had a deadline. Right? So it was quite impossible for me to get the big feedback, like who wants out, who, want, who doesn't want out. And um, that's number one. And number two, when I think about the publishing as a book. Um, okay, the whole context of it is that no matter what I do, right, someone is going to be unhappy and someone is going to be okay. Right? So, taking in the whole context of it, um, I also took the whole ethical decision of um, how much damage can it do out there. And when I measure it online, and it was quite a bit of damage because there were very bad comments which were uncalled for. Um, and there were also direct requests to take it offline. There was a guy who was very unhappy. Yes, the, the Stalin guy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, eventually, that, uh, my decision was based on the fact that, OK, if number one, this picture is drawing a lot of flat, and even if this person doesn't come forward and ask me to take it off, I took it offline. And the second thing is, if, let's say, the person can't ask me to take it offline, I take it offline. Because that's what I can do in my power, within my power. But once a book is published, right, I cannot take back all the books that they are one page and then sell the rest, right? I can't. So I think in that context, I have to take that decision and bear the consequences. If somebody's going to sue me over the book, I have to bear it. They won't sue you, they'll sue us. They'll sue us. Darren, do you remember we had this discussion, right? Did, did we consult a lawyer? No, right? No. But you have no grounds, man. It's yeah. not an uh, advertising campaign. Uh, and well, this is a public space, somewhat. Uh, SMRT. Not really. really. SMRT. SMRT. Yeah, they are, they, are, they are strict rule about photographing in the train. Uh, let, let me tell you something. The government will just say, for security reason. <laughs> we can't show you the train doors. Yeah, because. <laughs> what if IS use this for. They can come up with 10, 10, 10 20 reasons. Uh, My favorite is you cannot use your big camera, but you can use an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, it's quite strange. Uh, in the end, I think we, we know that we probably will not kill anybody by publishing this. Uh, if you are there with someone you're not supposed to be with, and <laughs> <laughs> you're taking the risk of taking public Yeah, you're taking public transport. So that was the argument. Like, you take public transport. You took the risk, la. so it's a few right la, if you can. Uh, did, did, did we as publisher have any fear about being sued? Not really, la, because yeah. number one, the, our book only is 500 copies, and <laughs> frankly speaking, they didn't sell very well. La, so. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, <laughs> 
it's okay, it's okay. I didn't cost much harm there. <laughs> Not just his book, but the whole project. Uh, yeah, so so those are mitigating factors. But I think by and large, we, we are quite clear that Yes, it's borderline, but nobody's going to bother us because we are nice people and uh, we, we, we didn't do this in a subversive way or uh, we, I think we could argue that this was a nationalistic project, we're celebrating the 2015 and uh, you, you say SG-15, nobody will dare to touch you. Right? <laughs> 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 well, to put it in context, I also think that the intention of any of the author is very important and it becomes very apparent over time. Okay, and, um, I feel that <clears throat> as a documentary photographer, your job is to document what you want to document at that point in time. I think the harder decision is actually what you do with photograph afterwards. And um, I think that is where the ethical dilemma really is. And I think many, many times, to be very honest, when I, somebody comes to, come, comes to me and tells me to remove photo, I feel very, very bad that I put that person on the, I put that person in the limelight. But you know, after that whole span, the whole span of incident, right, like over two weeks, then the whole thing went a bit cra crazy online. To be honest, if you take a step back now, right, it's like, how many years? Two years already. Two years, three years. Yeah, does yeah. anybody, has anybody been harmed? There are also a uh, consideration, like, are you using this for a commercial purpose? So, so if you're using this for Nike ad, you're making tons of money from it, somebody can come to you and demand a payment. Uh, in, in cases like this, people do ask for model release. But we call it an editorial journalistic project. It was impossible and not necessary to, to ask for a written release. And uh, to qualify, a lot of times right, people write to me and say, can I use this for their campaign or can I use this for commercial use? I say no, unless you can, we can find a way to get the model release. So, I think the context which is being used, in this case, there's a bit of artistic license. Huh? Okay, so um, we, we have to, it's a risk that, uh, that, that, that any, any artist who want to do any public work has to take. Um, and um, I think in this context, as long as we didn't benefit at somebody else's demand, at anybody's uh, the expense, I think uh, conscience is clear. We, we can say we lost money now. So like <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, um, I have a question regarding the evolution. Uh, it's not really how how photogenic generation grows. It's more of how actually editors of the eventually manipulate the meaning of the photo and or how the audience. You mean the straight style? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Or how actually like uh, audience actually you say or misinterpret uh, photo made by wires or by any photo journalist. Uh, how much change does it concern you? I mean, we can easily easily go or oh, I think it or people misinterpret. I can't do anything about it, but. How much is it There's a real example about a general election. Uh, I don't know how many general election ago. Uh, I was there, I was working there. Uh, so very long, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a workers' party rally, and you know, like 50, 60,000 people show up. <coughs> um, the street, I was at a picture desk, and we offered a picture of the big crowd. Uh, the editor in chief himself personally intervened and ask for a picture of a few people standing on stools. So basically want to say that nobody show up. Uh, I, I think staff got really upset and argue and like people threatened to resign and things like that and it was NSD from paper. Huh? It was NSD from paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was embarrassing because we all knew. Uh, this was pre Facebook, pre internet, so people couldn't check. Uh, I I think the editor never apologized, they never apologized, but uh, they do recognize that they've done something really shameful. Uh, I think we at Picture Dash we were really upset. I think we demanded to go see the editor in chief. Right? But it happens every, almost every election cycle, except for the last two. But, last but no, not anymore, because uh, now you, 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 you don't need to publish in the Swiss Times. Uh, you just go to Darren Souls. <laughs> No, no, no. Actually, it's no longer a concern because the PAP has spinned the story. 10,000 people, 100,000 people, sure, also never mind. In the end, they still vote for. 
But right. when you talk about context, you're talking about the cropping of an image or how you take ownership of it. How image editors, I mean, uh, I mean, you can have an EP, for example. Like, um, I mean, if me found something from North Korea, let's say some paper, I don't let's say in Europe, pick up this thing. Right. Um, they will actually, when they caption it, they will caption it differently, maybe okay, they made their story. And they will actually sort of you know, change. I get in trouble though. Yeah. At the end of the day, what can we do? I mean, there's a lot of apologizing and explaining, and all you can show is like, my, this is my caption. And that's why a lot of times when you go and shoot in certain places, people get nervous. It's also because they're trying to like, they, 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 they are very suspicious of how their pictures will be used. It's very difficult to enforce, I guess. Yeah. Yes, but usually people will compare it. Same picture appear in two different publications, the caption. And if it becomes big enough, then AP will have to step in and say, this was the picture we moved and this was the caption that went along. But it has to be big enough. I want to add very quickly to, to follow up on your, to, to, to build on what you asked. Sometimes photographers, they go for like an event and then there is a subject, maybe there's some political story or something sad has happened with this person and then you have the, the person talking and all of a sudden he takes a tissue out and he wipes close to his eye because he's sweating. Okay, <laughs> like, you take that photo because in your head you're like, it kind of looks like he's crying, it's a little bit more dramatic, right? But do you make sure that you don't caption it as wipes a tear, you know, you can just say wipes his face. So you can't add emotion to what's not there that you cannot confirm. That's you misleading know? Also, right? It's very misleading. So I mean I'm saying it's on the photographer's part. But a lot of times, you know, we look for that for a talking head, we look for any small action that they do, right? And then you snap. So it's like sometimes, yeah. Or, or very easy, politicians. Right? Remember that most photograph handshake in the world, Ma Ying Chiu and like the Xi Jinping, the Chinese and the And at the same time on the flip side, you have like the American and the Japanese, or the Japanese and the Taiwanese, whoever hates each other, and the moment they turn their back and they start doing this, it's like everyone takes a photo because, oh, we see they hate each other, and it's like, oh, he won't let him his pen, you know? So, it's like, it's, it's, it's very important how the photographer chooses but, their moments. But see, AP doesn't have a political agenda. You, you will not move a certain picture to... Yeah, no. Sorry. Sorry. We can't. There's so many, so many, so many instances of photographs being used to service a particular agenda. You know, like you can take a, a particular image and you know, you can take it out of context, you can remove a caption or you can take it out of a sequence of images, you can crop it, you can spin it in a story. It, it's, it's so easy to do, which is why as photographers we have a responsibility to try and be as honest and as accurate as we can to the, to the scene that's unfolding. So you could, yes, yeah, so you minimize the risk of it being misinterpreted. You but can't control but they can, yeah, you can't control that. You can't control that. So the only thing that you can do is you send stuff out there into the world and you try and do it as honestly and accurately as you can. And then if there's anything that follows on from that, maybe you have to chase that. Maybe you have to go there. Maybe you have to try and set the record straight. Um, but you, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to find it. Now, there's a, a great example from, and social media does this ad infinitum, right? Fake news, yeah? You know, it's just it's invented stuff. We, we know this now to be actual a serious problem, right? In terms of um, getting people to behave in a particular way. Um, and I remember f several years ago when you're talking about migration into Europe and there was a, a sort of far right fascist group on Facebook and they published a photograph of a, a guy in a canoe. And it, the caption was, um, you know, traveling from Syria. And then they, they, they had a photograph of the same guy in a, a flat with an AK-47. It's like um, preparing for war in Birmingham in, in the UK, right? This was shared and so forth. Both of those pictures were the American rapper Ice Cube, <laughs> right? One a film still and one a publicity shot from when he was a gangster rapper with NWA. Right? So you just take an image and it's done, it's out there. Okay, anyone? Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, I really like one uh, to the newspaper photographer. Because recently of the Aussie, the, the half unit, right? So I know I, the first time I noticed this picture was I think in Yahoo. It, it looked like the photographer raised his hand over the fence 
and take the shot and even included the fans in the composition. I thought maybe that was the only one. Later I discovered there were other photos just like that, like they just they just raised it over. I saw them climb on the guard post. Yeah, so isn't that like outrightly like wrong? I don't know, maybe the maybe the newspaper are people you, can are you on if you're on public ground? No no you're on public ground but you're you're putting your hands yeah, over the fence. You could so be really you could be really tall. What, were you there? I was there, I was there. I was there for the for July. Okay, uh, oh. I am a TV journalist. I follow my cameraman around for shoot videos. And I shot the office. So to do that, what we do is that we have to make sure the fence is always in our shot. That's what we missed. We wanted sure to show that you were... We that we never trespass. But the weather, we climb the thing. Uh, yes, Did you put a ladder against it? No, we never. We climb the... Cherry No, it's very interesting. Some people are okay if we flew a drone. People say, drone, I didn't really take a picture, it was the drone taking the picture. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, yeah. I think it's important that you, you, you uh, deliberately left the fence there. Yeah, we have, we make sure we put the fence there. I mean, because, you know, um, my decision, other than keeping on a P2 or be a Sony K, whatever, uh, phones are sometimes a lot because, you know, iPhones these days are so good. But technically, we can <coughs> do this, you know. And then we get a perfect Climb on what? But I understand they got they got they got they got the wall. Yeah, is it his property? His fence or other it people's fence? Other people's fence. Ah, uh, you climb on other people's fence. That's just passing. <laughs> 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 no, but then we did scale. It was like you know you just go like this. You pull a tripod very high. That kind of thing. Tom like, actually like, thinks sure that flying a drone is okay. But, drone, but that's like beyond the normal eye level, right? Like he's he's blocking your eye level and you're purposely like he's like putting a pole and then trying to like take <coughs> over. The, you have to be the you go there and try to do No, but I mean, yeah. some, it, but it, when you take... Or, you know, it, really can, it really depends on what your station was or what your company looks for. For us to maintain the ethics portion that to show that we have a we put a fence, make sure a fence is when you ask your question, is it right to raise no, the no, potential with a different angle? Or no, what? it seems to be intruding into the privacy because it, the fence seems to be deliberately to, to block, I guess, eye level view and then you're, you're purposely going across it. It could be very tall. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 hang on, hang on. Let's listen to the Straits Times. Uh, okay. I hear Mary shots happen all the time. Like, if, if I'm shot, kind of thing, if Brian's shot, uh, I hear Mary all the time. I will have to. I mean, but I know your your yeah. issue is the yeah. privacy issue. Yeah, yeah but but if you're trying to, if you're not trying to climb in kind of thing, like if you're not caught inside mm. kind of thing, I don't think there's an issue because you're standing on. If you if you're raising a hand in your private space. I mean, for for me, it's like if you don't want people to see your house, build a really high wall. Number one, there's no privacy law in Singapore. Okay? Number two, you can argue that okay, the fact that this was Lee Kuan Yew's house aside, you can argue that the guy has paid enough money to erect a wall, he has he's entitled to a certain level of privacy because he paid money to so if you have built a shop fence, you take a picture, fine. Because you never spend money. But now that he has spent money, <laughs> he's entitled to a certain protection. So if you use a ladder and lean against it, but all this is thrown out the window when drone is introduced. There are a lot of people say, drone is okay because you're not really taking photo. It's, it's the drone taking photo. But let me give you one more real scenario. If I go to another tall building that can see and I use a long telephoto, People have less of a problem. <coughs> so people have run because it was leaning against the wall and therefore possibly breaking a law. I used to get stopped in the US all the time by police that was when I would be photographing on the street. Often I would do stuff for the real estate section of the newspaper. And it was more people read the real estate section than they read the newspaper. No, 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 I can see where you're going with this and right. I feel your pain. So it's like I constantly get stopped by the, the police saying, oh, you can't take a photograph of this building. Okay. And you go and at that time, you know, they would say, I say, why can't you take a photograph of this building? And they would use security and terrorism and all this privacy, blah, 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 blah. And you'd be like, they'd have to explain, okay, maybe I got permission from there. Maybe I'm on public ground, right? Maybe I can go on Google and I can actually go Google Street View and screenshot that. You know, so it's like where that 
line of what is private and what is public is is this huge, 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 huge gray area. And the thing is, people try to use that to enforce their own kind of controls on things. Um, part of I think part of what we have to do as journalists is to push that a little bit, you know, and to push into that and say, look, this is important. It's important that people see what people are talking about. It's important that people have a, a view of. So is it XYZ. fair to say if LKY was alive, nobody would dare to take it? He's there with the shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We, we need to question yes. A quick technical question: What are the laws regarding drone photography in Singapore? There are no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, basically, oh, every single no fly zone. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't fly. Almost every part of Singapore is a no fly zone. No fly. Oh, yeah. You can fly in Marina South. That's all. <laughs> That's all. And then like. So Singapore can fly within five kilometers of any airport. So that means we are And also the Istana is a protected yeah. space. So there's a radius around the Istana which reaches Oxley. Then, and if you stay in condominiums next to it, in the Covenant Road, you have to sign certain documents that say you can't photograph in the Istana. No, but he's asking about drone. So if you go to onemap.sg, there are all these CAS overlays that will tell you where you can fly without a permit, which is not a lot of places. Like. And yeah. those, and no higher than... And you cannot go higher than 61 meters, yeah. 200 feet. And your craft must be visual. Sorry, it's yes. a comment, yes. No. So, although you can fly further, you technically you're supposed to be able to see it. So that applies to everybody else, but for media, if you want to use the drone, we have to apply for a license. Mm. We have to we have to tell them where and why we are doing it. Yeah. Everyone? Um, Every time you fly? Yeah, so yeah. like they're the issue. I mean, when drones first but came out. But the, the public? No, it's, it's, it's still, still long. Huh? Still one minute. Uh, yeah, it's so many years you can't use it. Sorry? Breaking news you can't use that. No. Yeah. But I thought Steph was talking to CAS or that. So I, I they, they need to clear that. So I think it's still it's still in the so works. Anywhere like outside of the green right. yeah. That's not a lot, you know. Okay, <laughs> hang on. I think we have time for two more questions. Okay. Anybody? Yes. Uh, so I'm kind of sitting up. So my question is, if every photo is a point of view, is it possible to think that no photo is truthful and no photo is possibly accurate to the full extent? You, know what you, yeah. you can't take a fake picture. I mean, technically, you say take double exposure. Is that fake or is it not fake? Because technically speaking, in your visual uh, space, it's not possible for you to see double, double exposure. Mm. So the question is, if every photo is not possibly accurate in itself, can we just question all photos then? Yeah, sure. Well, you, okay. can you, see. you can yeah. see RT4 and RT4. I think let's take it in another on the flip side. The, own, the, the, uh, the unfortunate or the fortunate thing about photography is that um, we, we take for granted that it represents a certain truth that we know in this world, a social norm, a truth that's according to social norms. So that's why when we, we uh, go in the building, they want a photo ID because that's a truthful representation of you. Right? So, Going back to the news photography side, I think you can see that the spectrum of how far we can stray from the standard of truth. How, and I'm talking about in terms of specificity. So for example, in a news photo photograph, if you caption it wrongly, straight away right, you destroy your own truth already. But what about pictures that appear in say a photo book that has no captions? and left or open door for interpretation. What kind of truth is that? It's another kind of truth. So, um, I mean, I think that that's a big philosophical question, but at the end of the day, unfortunately, photography is the medium of truth. Because people take it as what the camera take, right? It's real. But you have to bear in mind that nothing that we discuss here applies to fashion photography. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't apply to yeah, wedding photography. In fact, wedding photography, you have to be very fake. Uh, like. Not happy also make until very happy. It's a fake truth. So, fake truth. Yeah. so you fake it, but it's true. Wedding photography being called photojournalism. Hey, sorry, <laughs> that, that is part two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else? One last question, seriously. Uh, That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, why don't you just summarize? <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of scenarios that we have run into. No two are the same. We have no answers for you. But I think that based on the stuff that you heard tonight, 
Uh, if you have any situation where you have to think about what you're doing right or wrong, hopefully it gives you a bit more context to kind of ask yourself questions that go beyond the one step obvious. Should I do this because this will happen? Well, what if the repercussions are greater? You know, and I guess there's there's a lot of very definite no-nos when you're doing the digital recognition. You don't take away things. You're trying to tell the truth. Commercial photography does it all the time, but you're trying to tell the truth. You don't take things. You don't add anything. But um, you, you just need to know when you do what for. I guess um, common sense is prevalent. But I guess it. for me, if you ask me, the moral compass is the most important. And there's a time and place for everything, but uh, as long as you're true to yourself, to some extent, then of course you'll be a sleazy fellow then. But if, you, if you're doing what you do and you believe for the right reasons and you're willing to stand by that, then nobody can really fault you for doing what you do. Anything that any of you want to add? Thank you all for coming. So uh, I think judging from the number of people who I think there's uh, quite a, a bit of interest. So I think, uh, I, I also don't know why we took 20 years to organize something like this. Uh, so, personally, I, I'm very interested. Uh, I, I'm not an ethicist, but I have a curious interest. Uh, I, I think what we want to do is to maybe build a micro site whereby, uh, number one thing is to, to, to transcribe everything that we discuss so that people can refer to it. Yeah. <laughs> we are always looking for volunteers. Uh, number, number two is, I think it would be useful if we can build a database of more Singapore-centric examples. Because every time we talk about uh, ethical consideration, we always talk about people moving the pyramids, and uh, it's as if like, e ethics doesn't apply to this part of the world. It's uh, not <laughs> it's not journalism, it's just that you can't deny it. That's why people got upset. So, so we want to build that database, uh, and I, I think we would really want people to, to ask questions, uh, provide your own answers, uh, provide anecdotes about uh, what happened to you. And I, I think Juliana kick-started this whole process by saying, there are no more jobs in journalism, so why do I care about ethics? I mean, my ethics is not worth a single cent. Uh, how do we reply to that? Uh, does it mean that there are no jobs in journalism, therefore, we don't need to be ethical anymore. Uh, it's, it's a question that we all need to ask. Uh, Remember the menu example. So, I, I so think in this day with Instagram, our likes are more important than truth. So, well, we, we promise to let people go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, so, if you can come back to the platform, Facebook page, uh, hopefully, how long will we take to transcribe? <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to look very sad. By the night. A week, maybe. A week. Uh, there, there are a lot of people who are overseas who actually are interested to know is there a Singapore perspective also? Uh, hopefully, we can uh, get some of this material up and then keep, keep the conversation going. Uh, and hopefully, if we run a second session, uh, again, follow up on some of the questions, hopefully... Uh, or maybe you can, if you in the second section, where it's user-generated. Yeah. It's probably... Uh, yeah, then we can continue talking. Okay? Darren, anything? No? Well, the everybody's here. I don't need anybody's question. Ah, yes. We do have a survey of about 26 questions. Now you know most of them are based on truth. Uh, if you can fill in, it will help to give us a better understanding of where you stand. Uh, no right or wrong. Okay, thank you and good night.